What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my new dungeon. Today I have a very important video because with the 12th generation, Intel is now the top performer in World of Warcraft again. And this time is not by a few FPS, but the increment uh, in performance is massive. In this video, I'm going to show you the memory scaling from the JDEX specification to 6600 with the various uh, setups, so XMP, uh, manual timings, uh, 1T, 2T, a lot of stuff. And then I'm going to show you a short clip of a real gameplay in a battleground. So, without any further ado, let's get straight to the point. All right, here we have the past two generations of i9s and the 5950X and the 5800X, all at XMP and for the 12900K as well the base JDAC specification. With the Zen 3 we had an average around 140 FPS that against the 120s of the 10th and 11th generation i9s at the time was quite good but now the tables have turned again. I know it's quite a leap but the best have yet to come. An important change from the 11th generation to this new one is the introduction of the e-course that is for efficient cores. The e-cores are running at a lower frequency, so you can have an extra performance in multi-threading with a minimal impact on power consumption. It's a nice feature, but not if you're a World of Warcraft player. The problem with e-cores uh, and the lower than average 1% lows is that when uh, the main thread uh, that uh, WoW use is allocated there, the performance drop by a lot, and Windows is unable to keep the game always running on the P-core, the performance core. I bet uh, we can fix this by setting the core affinity in Windows, but uh, this might be a topic for another video. Today, for this benchmark, I simply disable all the e-cores in the BIOS, and the additional performance gain is more than obvious. We have 166 FPS for the JDAC 4800, and 187 FPS if we use a 6400 C32 memory kit, still on XMP. In the second position of the chart, you can see the CPU overclocked using a plus 2 in the thermal velocity boost settings, but the gains are very low. This is because the memory is the main bottleneck. So, let's forget about XMP and see the real performance of the manual tuned systems. In this chart, I have removed all the XMP results. Everything here was manually tuned in every timing, so the best of the best, at least for the hardware I have, Keep in mind that uh, luck is still an important factor when overclocking. Where do we start? If we pick the slowest uh, 12900K configurations, we have uh, the RAM set uh, to 6000C28, a very easy tuning for a Hynix based uh, RAM kit uh, that should be possible with most of the board out there. We have uh, 14 FPS on average more than a fully tuned 10th generation i9 and 20 FPS more than the 5800X, uh, that was the AMD best CPU for WoW. One thing that I have to point out is that uh, with Windows 11, the OS used for this test and for all this video, the i9 10900K was able to perform a bit better than the 5800X, that was the top performer on my latest review. This was made with hyper-trading off, but in fact, having it enabled or disabled didn't give me any performance gain or performance loss, unlike the, in the previous uh, generations. Now, let's move a bit uh, on the upper side of the chart. Memory do matter, and by a lot, since it's clear that uh, it's almost useless overclocking the CPU or the ring. In the middle, you can see a result of a sub-zero session I did at the negative 50 degrees, where I pushed uh, this CPU to 5.7 GHz on all cores in fixed and manual tuning. Last but not least, the top performer, 6600C32, this is quite a weird result, because uh, it seems that uh, have a big advantage over the, all the others, and even some more strange results in the next uh, slide. Here I have compared the three most popular resolution, mainly to check the levels for the GPU limited scenarios, with memory tuned from the JDAC to the highest I was able to. What is important to notice is that the difference between an XMP profile and a well-tuned is enormous. Before the 12th generation, testing with a 3019 Kingpin at uh, 1440p or 1080p was the same, but now it's clear that we stepped into another level. 
the strange fact about the 6600 C32 setup uh, is uh, I had an improvement also in 4K and that it shouldn't be possible. So I retested everything using the smart access memory feature enabled and I got the same result over and over again because I had to make sure that everything was okay. A nice thing about SMA is that I got a slightly better result uh, with the mid-range settings. But uh, when I will be able to move higher with the RAM frequency, like uh, 6800 or 7000, we will find out uh, more about it. Unfortunately, to do that, I have to wait for a new Apex. I tried three already, but all were affected by an issue in the manufacturing process. And uh, yes, I will make a dedicated video about this. Trying to find out more about the Super uh, 6600 profile, I used also a 6900 XT the Liquid Devil overclocked to 2.6 GHz, but unfortunately the performance was worse than the 3019 Kickpin. That, uh, well, is a factory unlocked card with a special BIOS release for extreme overclocking, so even more powerful than a regular 3090. So the 203 FPS might be in fact the limit of this card, because during the benchmarks the GPU utilization was at maximum almost all the time. That is another proof how strong the CPU is. All right, so we are in Oribos, 1440p, all set to graphics quality 10. And look at the counter. So we are well above 200 FPS. Look at the GPU percentage utilization. So we are not uh, GPU limited. Uh, well, this is massive. We are now at uh, 6200 for the memory. C28 uh, 1T, so a very nice uh, profile. And well, I don't even have to comment on this, it's just amazing. There's uh, people, a lot of people, and we are averaging more than 225 FPS. Uh, look at the 1% low and 0.1% low. I mean, I never seen a CPU doing good like that because uh, even with the Ryzen, the 5800X, uh, I was like 160, 170, maximum 140, so here we are really to another level. But we all know that in World of Warcraft, the toughest part of the game is a ride and battlegrounds with a lot of people. And here we are in a 40 versus 40, and well, here usually uh, I really have a big drops uh, even with the latest Ryzen, but now it's very, very steady. We have 80 FPS of 0.1% low and 19 FPS 1% low with an average of 123, 134. Uh, this is just amazing again because I was able to play 1440p, everything maxed out and real, real smooth. It's almost unbelievable. And for this test, I used a 6000 megabit for the memory just because I prefer to make this hard test tuned a bit lower to, to make it more stressful than uh, if you have a better kit. All right, guys, what can I say? This was literally a game changer. And I can tell you that I tested this briefly with DDR4 and the performance was quite similar. I will do uh, a comparison with uh, DDR4 and DDR5 uh, in the next weeks. I have to find a motherboard because uh, I tested briefly for a friend, a build and uh, well, uh, I can tell you that uh, the difference is not too much, but there is difference. Uh, well, I'm going to show you everything in detail with numbers so you can evaluate if you are willing to spend the extra money for a DDR5 board and the memory, the DDR5 memory, or you want to stick with your DDR4 that may you have in your actual build. So, well, uh, stay tuned because uh, I'm going to test uh, straight away the 12600K and the 1200F, so the small one, and uh, I can tell you that uh, the performer is still, still really good, uh, with even with the small one. So stay tuned, subscribe, and see you in the next one.